This week on Winchester's Deadly Passion, Melissa Bachman puts in her time in both Montana and Illinois over some incredible food plots for both an early and late season hunt. Filming herself in Montana, she's finally in the right place at the right time. Now fast forward to late season and she's all set up on a standing bean field with a 200 inch giant just out of range. That is, until a pack of coyotes show up and save the day. Montana's whitetail season opens up a lot earlier than other states that I'm used to, so it's usually one of my very first locations I like to head to for early season hunting. Now I had taken a beautiful mule deer last season with Powder River Outfitters. So this year, well I was kind of hoping for one of those big whitetails. And the other really cool part, well some of these bucks were still in velvet. And I've never taken a velvet buck, so I was really excited to maybe have a crack at them. you can hunt an area near a river, but you're usually in luck. And on the Powder River, well, this is an incredible location. We're all set up, ready for our afternoon sit here. We've got only 18 yards right to the fence post. We've got 17 yards to the watering hole. And we've got 20 yards right to this hole. So anywhere they pop up, they should be close. And we can see them coming from a long way off. We've been sitting here for about two and a half hours and no luck so far. Not even a deer has come through the area. But that's part of hunting these water holes. They don't come till probably an hour, two hours before dark. Now we just gotta be patient and wait. I had a great place where my ground blind was. That big buck had been feeding through there prior, but this evening he was not interested. We're set up this morning right off an alfalfa field and we've got some water in front of us. So in the mornings we're going to try to sit in blinds, midday try to do a little spot and stock, and maybe for the evenings hit the alfalfa fields. we got a buck coming in right now. He's about right across the ravine coming right towards this way. He looks pretty nice. He's kind of thin, but no, no, he dropped down into the ravine. I think he's gonna pop up right up on top of us here. I'm only gonna have probably a 20 yard shot. The wind is almost perfect for this blind. It's blowing right down. He came in the perfect spot, but just was a little too spooky for the water hole. That shows you how spooky these bucks are. This buck just got scared away by the creaking of the window. 
Melissa goes on a spot and stock when Winchester's deadly passion returns. We're set up about 400 yards off an alfalfa field hoping to catch these muleys coming from the food to get a drink of water before they head to bed. Surprise, surprise, a whitetail shows up. Nice buck, but not quite a shooter and really never presented a good shot. We're gonna head out of here, ease our way out, maybe look for some bigger bucks along the way and set up a ground blind for the evening hunt. So we're right behind the hill. We've got three muleys bedded on the opposite side. And we've come all the way around, checking the wind, and we've got a pretty stiff breeze here. So that'll be good, cover some of our sound and it's swirling right in here. I'm thinking with the way this is set up, the wind's blowing this way, but it might be a different story on the other side. So we're just gonna go slow, glass as we go, and see if we can find them. We know we've gotta go about 100, 200 yards to the other side and come right over the top on them. That's early season mule deer hunting. There were two bucks there. I knew there had to be more than just the one, but unfortunately they're both small. Overall, one more stock down and hopefully only a couple more to go. When you're hunting mule deer, one of the tough parts can be trying to get in close. But once you do finally get in close, the absolute hardest part can be trying to make them stand so you have a good shot. And this is exactly what I was running into. We had made a long stop, saw a beautiful buck, and all you could see was his antlers. Now I'm talking we are inside 20 yards, so I know if at any moment I make a sound, this buck is gonna blow out of there because I've kind of invaded his space. So I made sounds like a cow. I threw a rock. Bah! And finally the buck stood, but he did not stand long. He got up and immediately bolted. There was simply no other way. When he stood, the weeds were right in his way. He's the only one there, and it was worth a try. <laughs> Tip of the week is brought to you by Kenny. The facts say a lot, but the ride says it all. Scouting is really a year-round activity that, if done right, takes a lot of time and effort. Setting trail cameras, rehanging tree stands, and planting remote food plots take as much time, if not more, than the hunt itself. But there's one thing you can use to make your life a lot easier, and that's an ATV. This Can-Am can go almost anywhere. With great speed, maneuverability, and incredible power, you can simply get things done faster. Now those remote tree stands can be easily accessible during the off season, and you can ensure that everything is set and ready when the season starts. If you've done all the scouting correctly in a perfect world, you'll only need about one day of hunting. And the best part, once you get your animal down, it'll be an easy trip out. Let your Can-Am do the work and you can enjoy the moment. Winchester's Deadly Passion is presented by Swarovski Optic, North American Hunting Club, Rage Broadheads, Matthews, Can-Am, Wildlife Research Center, and Hot Mox.
It's early season hunting and we've positioned ourselves between their bedding area and a food source, a big alfalfa field. Now there's been a huge whitetail spotted coming in and out of this way. And the best part, all the deer are funneling out of the same point in the woods. So I set my ground blind up in cover, hopefully to get every buck that comes from their bedding area to the food source. Now this guy, I couldn't believe it. There was no question. This was the exact buck I was told had been out there, and he was a beauty, but he was just too far, and he was not interested in coming my way. I knew that he was probably gonna take the shortest point from the thick cover out to the field, and he messed around a little, but never once came my direction. A white tail that big still in velvet. You don't see that every day. So I just sat there and watched him, and it was one of those things to see a big whitetail that big in velvet and know you picked the right field, you just didn't quite pick the right spot he came out. As an avid shooter and hunter, I'm always curious about various types of ammunition and the detailed ballistic information to go along with it. But it's not always practical to spend days on end at the range shooting, even though we might like to. Now there's a way to get the same information right from your computer or as a free app on your iPhone with the Winchester Ballistics Calculator. You can compare up to five different Winchester products with really easy to read high-tech ballistic charts and graphs. You can choose from six different categories, including shotgun slugs, rim fire, center fire handgun, and center fire rifle ammo ballistics. Once you've chosen your ammo, you can adjust the shooting conditions on the ballistics calculator to replicate your hunting environment. You can enter specific conditions such as wind speed and outside temperature, adjust zero marks for sighting in, and view the ballistics of your favorite load. Now you can do some of the legwork from your computer or iPhone and ensure that your time on the range will be as effective as possible. We've switched gears. When you're hunting early season, there's a lot of ways to go after it. We've tried spot and stock, we've tried ground blinds, and now we're going to go with tree stands. As much as I enjoy hunting out of ground blinds, well, I was a little disgusted that it didn't work and I decided it's time to go up. Get up in a tree stand and have a little better opportunity at some of these big deer. Now my cameraman, he was going home, but I was not ready to leave yet. I thought I could maybe squeeze one or two more days in, so the next morning, Ken Gresslin of Powder River Outfitters and I went out and actually moved one of the stands. I got into my stand nice and early, set up my camera arm, put a GoPro on my head hoping to capture the entire experience. Well, I wasn't sitting there long and deer started coming out. As I was sitting there, I looked up and coming straight down, well, there were deer on the way. Now, one of them, well, it was the big buck I had seen before. He had super gold coat and he was just beautiful. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you. This might have been the most nervous I have ever been on a deer. For whatever reason, I was so excited that I had my camera rolling, I had my GoPro on my head, and it looked like it was all happening. Well, that's one of the most exciting times of any hunting experience. 
Now, it didn't look like I got a ton of penetration and I was a little nervous. Well, we waited till the next morning and we found my arrow. Now, I knew I didn't get a lot of penetration. It probably went in about this deep, but at 10 yards going that fast, hopefully it got in just enough. We have found the buck. This is unbelievable. It is almost hard to believe we could find anything in this thick brush. This is a beautiful buck. I was not sure we would find this guy, but the shot at 10 yards went in just, just enough. Beautiful dark chocolate horns, a perfect five by five. Looks like an older deer. I love hunting in Montana. Winchester's deadly passion is presented by Winchester Ammunition, Thompson Center, Cuddyback Digital, Bond Pot, Cabela's, She Outdoor Apparel, and Hunter Safety System. If harvesting a big buck were solely granted on patience and time on stand, I'd be at home admiring my big trophy right now. However, as any hunter knows, this is not the case. I passed on a number of bucks that would easily be considered shooters. The thing is, I wanted something better than nice. I wanted something bigger than a 140. I wanted a giant. I've sat through a wide variety of weather this season. Hunting the Golden Triangle is a totally different experience. We had the food, the genetics, the habitat to grow big bucks. We set up on the edge of a bean field right in a tree line. Beans are a great food source. They provide a lot of protein and stand tall even in the snowiest of conditions. I wasn't sitting on stand five minutes and deer started trickling out on the field. It was cold. If you've ever sat on stand in December, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I was freezing. I mean, it had been only a few minutes, but all of a sudden, out of the corner of my eye, there he was, a monster. My options are a little limited here. I'm up 25 feet in the stand, waiting for a buck 150 yards away. It's gonna take something close to a miracle to get this guy in front of my stand and within archery range. All the deer had filtered down the edge of the field, eating beans as they go. They had all congregated in the corner. Suddenly, all of the deer are alerted. But instead of spooking away from me, the whole field erupts. and 50 yards within moments turned into a much more doable shot. Now what happened? It's amazing. And no, I did not put in extra time training the coyotes in Illinois. They pushed this big buck and the entire group right to me. Now these well-trained coyotes have pushed this deer twice. And now he's at 55 yards. The only thing I'm worried about is, is the third time, are they gonna push him in the opposite direction? All I really needed was eight more steps. 
by this buck not taking those extra steps, he was making my decision very tough. I just shot the biggest buck I have ever seen in my entire life. Had this buck dropped right in the field, it would have saved miles of walking and tracking. However, that was not the case. But the end result was the same. This. <laughs> a girl with her wish for oh A storybook ending showing how hunting the right places mixed with a lot of patience and dedication can result in the trophy of a lifetime. Coming up next week on Winchester's Deadly Passion, Melissa spends some time in Texas hunting wild hawks. She has all her favorite gear, including rifles, pistols, and bows, and she's doing it all spot and stock. Wild hogs have an incredible sense of smell and great ears, so these hogs can be tough to get in close. But Melissa is dedicated to help take out as many of these big boars as possible.